thought I'd make this video about using the post driver on the small tractor because I didn't really find a lot of information before I ventured down this road. I wasn't really sure if this 1526 would be big enough to really be effective at this, but it's fine. Um, this is the PD-8000 from Ken Cove, but it seems to me like most of the post drivers in this class are very similar and they have different sizes each manufacturer does. There's this little lever here which holds the post kind of in place. There's uh, the valve which came with it and the hoses that came with it. Of course I had to have a rear remote which thankfully I already had. The way the hydraulic works on this is it takes the pressure from the tractor out of the rear remote and so when it's running I set up a bungee cord on the lever. Interestingly when that lever is actuated like that the three-point lift doesn't work. So something about the way the hydraulics route and so the incoming pressure comes through the half inch line into the left side of the valve. The valve has this safety uh, mechanism. Right now it is in the up position. The ram is in the up position. Hard to see on this cloudy day but there's a big heavy piece of channel here. I'd say it's like three-eighths or half inch uh, I-beam I guess. It's a big heavy piece and then it's got springs also alongside the post. You can see those. There's a hydraulic cylinder it's very long a very long travel and it lifts up the uh, the big heavy ram and then when you actuate the valve it falls down on the post like that and when it does that it dumps hydraulic pressure back to the tractor and so you can't really run it back through the remote they say some people do apparently but uh, they say it's too much restriction and so there's this big beefy line here comes back and I just ran it into the fill port for the hydraulics and so the fill port was um, I believe that's a one inch pipe thread whatever it was is took the cap to the store and uh, found a bushing it's plastic because I didn't want to damage the tractor and then there's a three-quarter inch uh, nipple there and then a three-quarter inch elbow and then the rest of the fittings came with the device. A couple things that I'm noticing that are less optimal about it. I've had it sitting outside for several months because the ground was just so dry. I didn't want to attempt to drive posts into the brick. But there are handy grease fittings here and here. There's a grease fitting for the left-right adjustment, but oddly they didn't put one in the front-back adjustment. I'd almost be inclined to just drill a hole in that bolt and go ahead and put one in. We'll see how it plays out. Also, it's very hard to store because it comes with a pin that secures the ram to the track, I guess you could say, down at the bottom. And when that's there, uh, this is how it looks. Basically, the ram ends up being about that high off the ground. And so you have to put a block underneath and lower it down so that the, the whole thing's level. The legs are adjustable with those bolts. As of now, they're completely into their um, tunnels, so or their receivers. I'd have to take the feet out and cut off some on the top of the posts to get them down that extra four inches of travel that's there, which that's an option, but I don't think it solves the problem. It still needs some type of block under the ram. And of course, I definitely would want to store it with the ram in the down position, which it does go down all the way to the ground if you don't use the pin. So that may be an option too, is just to to lower the ram um, completely to the ground and disconnect there. But I'm always thinking about like, is this thing gonna fall over on somebody? And uh, I don't know, not so sure about how that's gonna play out. But it's doing okay with a the post. There's definitely some learning curve to getting them straight. Um, so kind of doing so-so about that. I got my string stretched and I basically measure and mark and then um, check a little bit it's it, there's some more art than science because the post itself is pretty curved and so you get the level on there we well, got to make sure the level's really in a straight part of the post anyway um, thankfully this is a pretty low risk um, fence it's really not even a fence it's just a trellis for these grapevines so we're spacing the posts 30 feet and we'll run a single 12 gauge wire at the top and there'll be another line of posts over to the right and we'll have bracing at the corners So I will say that the 
having the driver I think is worthwhile. We have an auger also. And the auger works good, especially if the ground is, is not too hard. I don't think really either of them is going to work that great if the ground's hard. But the cool thing about the driver is that the post goes in the ground ready to use. Whereas if we use the auger, we drill the hole, we set the posts in the hole, um, and then we tap, tap, tap dirt all around it as we fill in the hole. It's easier to get a more precise hole location with the auger in that method, and it's easier to get the, plum, the post perfectly plumb, I would say. Uh, also, I haven't hit any big rocks yet. I mean, they're certainly here. You can see one right there that the power company dug up um, through that ditch that they dug. So, um, so I don't know. We'll see how it plays out over time and the rest of the, the job here. But the tractor's certainly up for it. Thank <laughs> you.